Good afternoon. It's Monday, March 28th, the last Monday of the month of March. We're moving right on through the year 2022. There's a lot of discussion about power, about forms of power, whether fossil fuel, gas and oil, or electric power, battery power, natural power, the sun and the wind. We hear these conversations every day, but no form of power compares not even close to the power of the Word of God. Luke chapter 4 and verse 32, Luke's talking about the response to the teaching of Jesus in the synagogue. And he said in verse 32, Luke chapter 4, they were astonished at Jesus's teaching for his word was with power and authority. The people were astonished. God's word whether spoken by Jesus, as in the case we just read there, as he walked the earth in ministry, or God's word written in scripture as part of one of the 66 books of the Bible, all his word is certainly filled with power. Every, every word of God is filled with power. And the power of the word of God is emphasized in many different ways throughout scripture. Let me give us just a couple this afternoon. One example to think about is Jeremiah chapter 29, uh, chapter 23 and verse 29, Jeremiah 23, 29, where Jeremiah says, Is not my word like a fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rock to pieces? So the word of God is compared uh, in power to the fire and to the hammer. And the, the fire analogy is highlighted again um, in Jeremiah 20, it's before the passage we read, Jeremiah 20 and verse 9, when the prophet had become very tired, even worn out because of the negative reaction against his preaching. He was tired to the point that he was planning to quit preaching. He was, he was going to throw in the towel. Then I said, verse 9 of, of Jeremiah 20, then I said, I will not speak anymore in his name, but his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I was weary with holding it in, and I could not hold it in. So the power of God had to get out of the prophet. God's word is seen uh, when Paul calls it a sharp sword that's wielded by the Holy Spirit. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 17 is part of the Christian's armor or exhorted to take the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12, the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and to the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That's Hebrews 4.12 again. So even uh, looking at these scriptures, and I, th I think more significantly, perhaps, uh, the the power of the word is compared to light, light energy, solar power is really the most basic form of all forms of energy, all forms of power, uh, the sun. Psalm 119 has a couple of incidences of this. Psalm 119, verse 105, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path. So the word of God is a light. And then a little bit later, uh, in the same Psalm 119 and verse 130, the entrance of your words gives light, the psalmist said. Um, couple that with the first words of Genesis chapter 1 and verse 3, let there be light. Creative word was spoken and, and there was light. No, no earthly form of power, whether it's solar or electric or gas or diesel or coal or whatever, no earthly form of power that man has come up with, and there's certainly a, a lot, and they've all been beneficial in some way, but no form of power that we can come up with can compare to the power in the word of the one who is himself the living word of God, Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter uh, 1 and verse 3 says, he actually upholds all things by the word of his power. Everything is in place. Everything is held in place because of and by the word of his power. That's power. That's the power of God's word. What will we do with it today? Amen. Praise the Lord. That's good. I'm thankful for his word. We don't worship the word of God. We worship the one who gave us the word. We worship the one who is the word, but we don't, we don't worship the Bible. We don't worship scripture. 
but we worship the one that we find in Scripture, uh, our Heavenly Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's take a minute. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the truth that it is, the hope that it gives. We thank you for the life that it provides. Lord, and everything uh, we have comes from you as you spoke it into existence. And we thank you for that. Lord, help us to live in a way that pleases you. You've given to us your word that we might know you, that we might know ourselves, that we might know our need uh, of you, our Savior. Help us, Lord, to, to be obedient to what you've said, to be obedient to your word and do what you've asked us to do, what you've told us to do. We want to live for you. We want to please you. So, Lord, help us to do that. I pray blessing on your people today, Lord. Watch over us. Keep us. Um, many need healing. Many need strength. Some need provision. Lord, only you can do this, and we ask for your help. We're grateful for your goodness to us and your blessings. I pray blessing on your people, our homes and families, and we thank you for every good thing. We continue to pray for our friends in Ukraine. Lord, stop that conflict. We pray you'd be honored, you'd be glorified uh, through that, even in spite of all that man does. Lord, you can receive glory, and you work all things together for good. So we ask your, your help in that. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, God bless you. It's a beautiful day, and I uh, hope you get out for a minute, get a little bit of sunshine, and um, we'll look for you again Tuesday, tomorrow. Take care.